Tá bom? Sim. is a nice rhythm exercise that we're going to take a look at for a very common chord progression in the key of D. Now we are going to work out of C position. I had the capo on the second fret, but we're going to work on out of C position and it's going to be a 1-4-1-5 one, one, chord progression, something you often see in bluegrass country in old time. And it's going to have some of that Norman Blake and Doc Watson influence and in styles all across um, these arrangements. Now I've created three arrangements and it kind of they it's kind of like a study piece. It kind of builds upon each other. So beginning, intermediate, and intermediate advanced for the third time. And again, we're going to cover just a bunch of fundamental rhythm sequences, moves, bass walks, ornamentations, however you want to think about it. But it's all all going to be very fundamental and things that are going to really spice up your playing, add energy to your rhythm, and just be a whole lot of fun to use, you know, and to play. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a great exercise here in C position, getting a lot of that Doc Watts, Norma Blake thing going on. Now, if you'd like to check out Access and the full length video, it's just, just a preview, click the link down there below and it will shoot you onto my website. And if you um, join as a premier member for a monthly, quarterly, or yearly fee, you can access this lesson and over 350 video lessons at my site, all three of my courses and the video exchange program, all right? Now this lesson's gonna come with about 35 to 40 minutes of video, PDF tabs, I got everything uh, tabbed out, you know, just as I play it, and I've got four audio backing tracks to help you work your speeds up as well, all right? So I got all the practice tools necessary for you to master this style of playing, get involved in this bluegrass old time rhythm, uh, yeah, style for your rhythm, all right? so. Anyway, we're going to start walking through the first few measures of this um, first arrangement. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy. All right, so let's go ahead and start breaking down this bluegrass and old time rhythm exercise in C position number one here. Very common chord progression, 1-4-1-5 one, one, here in the key of D. I'm sounding the key of D, but I'm um, playing out of C position, of course. Capo second fret out of C position sounds a D chord. Uh, make sure you pay attention to the markings below the staff. They are pick directions. Um, staples are the downs and the V's are, are the up and it's very important for executing um, and playing these arrangements and moves smoothly, cleanly, and up to speed. So I'm going to play those first four measures and then I'm going to break them on down. Uh, again, first arrangement, uh, some really basic stuff. going to be utilizing the alternate bass strumming but then starting to get more walks involved as well. Um, so here it is. It starts on beat two. One, two, three, four, one. Do it again. One, two, three, four, one. Okay. So some basic stuff there. And we're going to, um, you know, we'll see some of the stuff again and again, and we'll move a little faster throughout the lesson once we get through these first few measures and understand what's going on. But so again, it starts on beat two, and it's got, that's where that first marking is a quarter note rest, and it's going to have a little pickup, a little walk up into the C, and you can do this anytime when you come into the C chord. But third fret, low E, open A, and second fret A. And those are all quarter notes, so you all see, you see downstrokes there. All right. 
then we're gonna get into the C chord, third fret A. Okay, and that's the C bass note right there. And this measure right here is just an alternate bass drumming. So um, that's what it sounds like. So we pluck the third fret A, and then we strum. So that's what that zero one zero and it's beamed together to another zero one zero. That's two eighth notes together. And that indicates a strum for us here, down up. And if you hit more strings than that and you're down up, it's not the end of the world, but I do like to play those top three, or the highest sounding three strings of the chord, or you know what's indicated. It kind of cleans things up. Uh, makes the chord sound a little sharper. So that's what the strum is all about. That's how it's indicated. These two eighth notes here. And then the third fret low E. So my third finger can come up, catch the low string third fret. Okay. So yeah, some of this stuff right here, you know, this is kind of basic, you know, bluegrass country um, strumming stuff. Maybe you've covered it, maybe you haven't, but I'm kind of going, I'm starting from a place of perhaps you've had very little or none about it and again we'll move a little quicker once we get going but okay and then measure three we do the a string again third fret and then we do another strum and then we're going to do a walk into the f chord so zero on the open or open d second fret d and then f and i'll play the third fret d and I'll finger my F chord, and then I'll strum the F. And then third fret A, so I have to move my third finger as well, and then strum those bottom three. Now you could get into your F chord, some people will get in there with your pinky and play F like this. It's kind of an F uh, slash C chord. And then I don't have to move any fingers when I do my alternate bass. If I hit that D string then, um, I get a note within the chord. Either one is totally fine, and, you, and I find myself doing both. Of course, if you do it like this, you just kinda gotta be careful not to hit that open D string when you're playing and if you do it's still really not the end of the world but um it just cleans it up of course so for those of you if you're beginning i would just sit around and practice measures two measure four and just work on your alternate bass you know, i'm just doing measure two over and over okay or okay so let me play those or in, before I play them, I guess what, what I'm doing is, again, I'm doing some a bass walk into the C, alternate strumming, and then doing a bass walk into the F, and then alternate strumming. That's what we're gonna be doing a lot in this first arrangement, just some basic walks. And it really goes a long way, um, just doing these simple things. So don't, over, don't overlook them if you haven't mastered them yet. So here's those measures in context. One, two, three, four, one. Let's move on to the next few measures. They sound like this. Ready, two, three, four. still on the F chord there in measure five. So we're gonna pluck the D string, third fret, kind of strum. And then we're gonna walk back down, um, darn near the same, the same way we came up. Um, and then second fret D, open D, and then 
we're gonna land third fret A, you know, and then land there with our whole C chord. Okay, so. And then third fret A, we strum. Third fret low E, strum. Back to third fret A, next measure, strum. And then we're gonna walk down to the G chord here. Second fret A, open A, third fret low E, and make your G chord. Strum, and then open D, strum. And so there's an alternate bass strumming pattern for the G chord. A nice relaxed wrist. Everything relaxed and loose. Make sure you get the upstroke in there. I know some people struggle at first, but just nice and easy and even in your strumming. So um, all four of those again to slowly go. So yeah, we're just getting the basics, walking uh, up and down to the chords, and that just gives it um, some more drive. When you when you get the plan up to speed, it's really going to drive and and lead. Um, you know, other people are going to know what chords are coming by you doing these walks. I'm going to hear that, and I'm like, oh hey, here comes the next chord. Um, so it's great for the listener, and uh, it's great for the music. So let's move on to the next few measures. Two, one, two. 